Hi, it's Evan, co-founder of Flight Simulation Association, and welcome to the cross-community panel discussion on the future of at-home flight simulation. You should be able to hear audio coming through now, and now's a great time to check your audio and sound settings to make sure that you're ready to go when our live presentation begins in just a few moments. Now, we're not live yet. This is a video recording, but we will be going live at the top of the hour. You can see a counter on the screen right here showing you exactly how long we have before we get started today at 2000 GMT. We'll be going until 2130 GMT, covering a wide variety of questions submitted to us by the community and culminating in a huge raffle prize, the Honeycomb Alpha Flight Controls Yoke. Someone on the stream today at 2130 GMT is going to be announced as the winner of a Honeycomb Alpha Flight Controls Yoke. So super exciting. That will be coming up later with lots more information as well. Let me talk a little bit about what we're going to be doing today. We'll be going live at the top of the hour, and we'll start with a brief introduction as well as the first of three prize draws. There's going to be three happening over the course of these 90 minutes, giving you the chance to win some awesome prizes, including that Honeycomb Alpha Yoke, and I'll talk more about that in a couple of moments. Following that first prize draw, we're going to go into questions submitted by the community from content creators, from magazines and news websites across the community. So we'll be looking at four questions, taking a quick break to do a second prize draw, and then going back into some more questions that were pre-submitted to the panel from folks from around the community. I would absolutely love it if we had a chance to answer some questions from the audience. I think and hope we're going to be able to do that. However, it will be dependent on time, and there's lots of people on the panel, and there's lots of great questions. So if we have time at the end, hopefully some of those broadcast partners I'll talk about in a few moments can send us some questions to answer, and we will do our best to get to those if we can at all. But we're going to be focusing first on those eight or nine questions submitted by content creators, news websites, and other personalities in advance. And then again at 2130 GMT, we'll have our final prize draw, which will include the chance to win that Honeycomb Alpha Flight Controls product, along with several other great software add-on DLC items over the course of today. You'll have lots and lots of opportunity to win. So hang out with us, and we'll talk all about how we can do that over the next little while. And today's session is going to be moderated by Callum from FS Elite. He'll have the challenging job of keeping all of our panelists on time and on schedule over the next 90 minutes. And I also wanted to talk about something we're doing that might be a little bit different. We have six different developers on today's panel. And by my calculation, that means there's probably about another 700 or so who can't be on this panel. And of course, with the video format, we'd love to have as many people on as we could. But once you get above about six or seven people on a video call, it's kind of difficult to get a word in. And and so we thought, how else could we try to get developers of freeware and payware products, large and small, to be involved in today's discussion? And we've come up with this thing we call the developer chat. It's going to show up on the screen right here over the course of today's session. And any developer, large or small, is able to participate simply by joining in our Discord and chatting in a certain channel. And every message they send, that'll come up in this developer chat over the course of today's stream. So if you are a developer, freeware, payware, large or small, we would love to have you on with today's discussion. Come on out and support us. And hopefully if people enjoy this and we can do it again, we'll get you on the panel next time. So if you're a developer, and you already have the FSA Partners Discord, that's where you need to be. If you don't have that, send me an email, evan at flightsimassociation.com. Reach out to me on Discord, and we will get you in that Discord and in the channel so that you can communicate with all of us during today's session and you can participate. And again, we really are hoping for people from across the community to support this and get involved. If you guys like this and you find it's a good session, we would love to do more of it. Let me talk a bit about broadcast partners. So broadcast partners, what, is, what does that even mean? When we were thinking about how we could run this stream, we realized that, first of all, we at FSA are definitely not live streamers. And most flights and developers, they also don't do a lot of live streaming. They're focused on development. And so we thought, we don't want to take people away from content creators. We don't want people coming to our YouTube channel or going to Flights and Association. I mean, hey, if you're watching on there, like phenomenal and, and thank you. And we'll absolutely hang out with you. But we thought, could we make this a bit of a broader community event where people could really kind of hang out with those people that they usually are chatting with and enjoy the presentation and enjoy this experience in kind of a unique way. And so we came up with this concept of the watch party. Now that's a little bit new to us here in flight simulation, but it's very common across other games and other large e sporting events. And we reached out to content creators and we said, look, if you want, why don't you restream today's presentation? So instead of just having people watching it on Orbix's YouTube channel, people could actually go and hang out with you and they could watch your reactions and chat with you and kind of experience it with you in person. 
an effort with me. I'm a VATSIM controller. I work in a specific area of the Northeast. And if I were watching this, if I wasn't here hosting it, I'd be hanging out in the TeamSpeak with whoever was around, just watching and kind of chatting along. And so we really want to encourage people, if you love to use YouTube and watch content creators there, if you like Twitch and like to watch content creators there, or if you're part of a VA or your community, use this as an opportunity to hang out with people and don't just watch it on your own. Now, again, if, if you are on your own, that that's cool. We'll watch it with you on the Orbix YouTube channel. We'll be hanging out with you on Flight Sim Association. But if you are someone who loves to go online, here are some names that you can follow. And there may be others that have joined on since we created this. If you're on YouTube, Oz Flight Simmer, Sim Flight Pro, Captain Bob Flight Simulation, Flight Sim Geeks, and SizzlingPopcorn.ca. That'll take you right to his YouTube channel. They're all going to be hosting these watch parties where you can hang out, watch with them, hear and comment with them in real time, and get their experience and their take on things. And on Twitch, we've got Chewy, Ford or Learn to Fly, Mustafa, and Two-Tone Murphy who are all restreaming this. And again, if you're a content creator, you want to get involved, feel free, jump on, restream this with us as well, and connect with your audience and use it as a bit of a chance to hang out with your viewers where you're not always the one on the camera. Um, just share your reactions, share your thoughts, chat with people, and kind of make this a nice community event. I was on watching Two-Tone on Twitch on Wednesday and kind of hearing him talk about this, and he's like, so they said watch party. I don't know what to watch party is but it's gonna be fun we're gonna do it gonna crack open a couple of drinks and just see what happens and that's great you know we would love for this to be a true community thing where people can hang out in their respective communities where you can take part in this as a bit of a group activity something special to do on a Saturday afternoon for us here in North America evening and wherever you are in the world hanging out with us we hope you have a good time and we hope that you can do this with some people who are special to you in the flight simulation community and I really want to talk about coming together because that's a big part of what today's presentation is all about and really what we are about at Flight Sim Expo and Flight Simulation Association. If there's one thing that I think our community could use, it's a little more love. It's a little more understanding of what's going on. You know, sometimes I read comments when a developer makes an announcement or when someone comes out with something new, and those comments, are, they can be really tough. And sometimes, you know, we forget as we start typing away on that keyboard that there's real people behind these companies and these organizations. And many times, that might only be one or two people. So if you're out there saying developer X sucks, really you're saying, this person sucks because that's their company and there's maybe only one of them. They probably do this part time. They probably have another job. They probably wish they could spend more time on flight sim stuff, but they can't because it's hard to make a living in the flight simulation world. Believe it or not, with you know people saying that prices are too high, it can be very challenging for companies to be able to recoup even just the base investment in the technology they have to buy to make the products, never mind covering the costs of their own time. And so if we at Flight Sim Association can play a small role in helping people understand what goes on behind product development, what some of these developers are up against, we would love to do that. And we'd love to help bring our community together in ways that are a little bit different than what we usually see. I talk to developers on a regular basis who say, I'd love to announce something live, but I'm not comfortable doing that because what if people don't like it? What if their reaction is negative? And people are worried a little bit about what might someone say. So let's try to build some understanding over the course of today's session. Let's have some fun. Let's chat and let's connect in ways that right now, obviously, we can really only do online with everything going on in the world. Now, of course, we do have Flight Sim Expo coming up and Flight Sim Expo, you know, it's all about this. It's all about that one-on-one in-person experience of getting to know people and really understanding the folks who are behind the products that we make. Not everyone can come to the show this year, which is why we're doing an online event. And it's also why we started Flight Simulation Association. It's about giving people these unique ways to kind of come together outside of the forums, across different communities, bringing content creators together, bringing developers together, and doing stuff that maybe we don't get to see every single day in our flights and community. And I do think that's extremely important for our industry. And I hope that people, whether you're a simmer, a content creator, or a developer, consider getting involved in that type of a mission. So whoever you are, if you're watching Thank you for being here and for being part of today's show. And if you'd like to see more of this, you can help us by sharing the news with your community, with your Discord, with your social media, with your Twitch channel, whatever it is and wherever you are. Please bring in people and use this as a chance not just to sit and watch with 
us here on the Orbix YouTube channel or on Flight Sim Association. Use it as a chance to watch with your friends and let's come together as a community for the next 90 minutes and have a good time and have a really, really interesting discussion. And of course, for those of you who are able to make it, we'd love for you to come out to the show in San Diego in September. If you aren't able to make the show, we can do that online only. And it may not be possible this year, but remember, it's not just us. There's shows in the UK, there's one in the Netherlands, there's one in Australia, and we'd love to see more of that. Bringing flight simmers together in person is such a unique and cool thing. And of course, when we can't do that in person, Flight Sim Association is a way that we've used to try to keep the community connected in between the big shows. Again, we don't want to be content creators. We don't want to be live streamers. We would love to work with you people who are doing that kind of stuff to help share stuff like this. And so again, if people enjoy today and find this interesting, we'd love to do some more of it. And you can help that by just sharing the word, finding out more about Flight Simulation Association, or just by sharing the link to today's session as we go and get started. All right, I promised I was going to talk about giveaways. Now is the opportunity. Here we go. We are doing the first of our three live stream raffle prize giveaways starting right now. So here's what you need to do. Go to flightsimassociation.com slash contest. Flightsimassociation.com slash contest. Now anyone can do this. It is totally free. You do not have to be an FSA member. If you are, thank you for the support, but you don't have to be. Anyone can enter. We're going to ask you for two pieces of information. We're going to ask you for your email address, and we're only going to use that to tell you if you've won, unless you opt in for more. And we want to ask for your name. And that could be a name, it could be a username, whatever you'd like to refer by if you are the winner. And I have to say your name, whatever you want me to say, put that in the second question. When you go and submit that entry, you will be entered into our first round of prizes. Those are from Aerosoft, the winner's choice of a downloadable product, from Just Flight, the winner's choice of a downloadable product, from Milviz, the Corsair from Microsoft Flight Simulator, which is a World War II fighter bomber product they came out with recently. From Orbix, there are two chances to win, and that'll be anything you want from the Orbix Direct Store. And TFDI Design has also offered a prize of the user's choice. So there are six separate prizes in this first prize draw. And if you don't win this time, there are lots more to go. So if you wanted to win some of those prizes and throw your name in, Aerosoft, Just Flight, Milviz, Orbix, and TFDI Design, go to flightsimassociation.com slash contest. Again, you do not need to be an FSA member. We thank you if you are, but if you aren't, that's fine too. Flightsimassociation.com slash contest. Pop in your email address, tell us what you'd like us to call you if you are the winner, and you'll be entered into the raffle. Now, I will say, very important, if you are the winner, and I announced your name on the stream today, you will have 24 hours to claim your prize. I'm going to send you an email tomorrow. You have 24 hours from when I send you that email to claim your prize. If you don't respond to that email, it is going to somebody else. So make sure tomorrow morning, check your email, check your spam filters. If you were announced as a winner, 24 hours is the time limit to respond to my email and claim your prize, or it goes to somebody else. So make sure you're checking your email from us again. Once this is over, if you don't want to hear from us, we are absolutely not going to use your email for anything. It is just to let you know if you've won, other than if you choose to opt in, you have the option to do that. And of course, we will be respectful of your email and of your privacy at all times. So flightsmassociation.com slash contest, you can enter the raffle. Do that now, and we're going to be back in just a couple minutes to announce the winner of this first raffle in, again, just a few minutes as we go live. Thank you so much for being on today. We're very excited to be hosting the first ever, I think, cross-community panel discussion live with six developers moderated by Callum from FS Elite. Huge thank you to him for being here, to Elise and the team at Orbix for partnering with us on this project. We hope you find it a lot of fun. We hope you're going to be able to watch it with a content creator or in your own community. We'll be back in just a few moments to go live, so stay with us, put your name in that stream raffle, and we'll be back live at the top of the hour.
Hello, hello, good evening, good afternoon from us here in North America. Good evening to those of you joining us from Europe. Very good early morning to those of you in Australia joining Orbix. And hello wherever else you are watching the first ever live cross-community panel discussion on Flight Simulation Association in partnership with Orbix's Fly July. Very excited to have panelists here from across the community talking all about the future of flight simulation. What does it mean that we have the console release coming up in a couple of days? what's going to happen to existing platforms like P3D, X-Plane, Aerofly, and others, and what are things going to look like in the next few years in our hobby. We're talking about all of those things with panelists from across the community here in just a couple of moments. My name is Evan. I'm one of the two co-founders of Flight Simulation Association. We're very excited to be hosting today's presentation. We'll be getting you over to those panelists in just a couple of moments. I want to take a second just to chat about what you can expect over the course of the next 90 minutes today. We'll be starting off with a brief introduction from me as well as the first of our three prize draws. We've got some amazing, amazing prizes, more than 25 giveaways happening over the next 90 minutes. Once the first prize draw is done, we'll go into four questions submitted from people across the community, magazines, news sites, content creators. We'll then come back for a quick break, give the panelists a moment to stretch, do the second of our three prize draws, answer four more pre-submitted questions, and if there's time, we'd love to get into questions submitted by the audience and our broadcast partners. Fingers crossed on that one, but I don't want to make any promises, because at 2130 GMT, we are going live with our grand prize draw. There's going to be 13 more prizes at 2130 that I'm going to announce, followed by the Honeycomb Alpha Flight Controls Yoke. So stick around with us throughout the panel. Lots of opportunity to win some amazing, amazing prizes. And let's get that giveaway contest started right now. I see many people have already gone ahead and entered. If you have not yet entered, now's a great time to go to flightsimassociation.com slash contest. Put in your information, your name or whatever you'd like us to call you if you're a winner email address. We won't use that email unless you want us to, to talk to you. And go ahead and do that right now. You're going to have three separate opportunities. This is the first one. Do it once. Don't do it 10 times. Don't do it 15 times. Do it once. And then I'll let you know when you can go ahead and do that again for our next round. While you're entering the contest, let me tell you about some of the broadcast partners we have today. We see this a lot in other parts of gaming and in other eSport type activities, not so much in Flight Sim. We reached out to content creators. We said, look, um, I'm most certainly not a live streamer. Developers, they develop products. They don't really live stream. But you content creators do an amazing job. I'm constantly in awe of what you're able to do. So we don't want to be competing with you for people's attention. We want to work with you. And so we're really excited that you're helping us spread the word today. There's people on YouTube, Oz Flight Simmer, Sim Flight Pro, Captain Bob Flight Simulation, Flight Sim Geeks, and Sizzling Popcorn. Thank you guys for helping to support on Twitch. Um, I'm going to wave to you. I can't see you, but you can see me. I hope you wave back. Chewy94, Forder Learn to Fly, Mustafa, Two-Tone Murphy. Hello, everybody. Thank you guys for supporting. And we really hope this is a community thing. We want you to be enjoying this with somebody, whether that's your virtual airline community, whether you're in TeamSpeak, whether you're watching on one of those channels I just mentioned. This is all about let's come together as a community for 90 minutes and have a chat and hopefully you can react and chat and comment along with some of those content creators or whoever you love to hang out with in flight simulation and please tell your friends about this if this panel goes well and if folks enjoy this we'd love to be able to get together maybe a couple of times a year do a panel on hardware do one on content creation maybe we can get some of the big simulator manufacturers out to talk with us too so we'd love to do this a little more often please spread the word share the link wherever you're watching this right now wherever you can can, and let's get some people involved and let's give away some awesome prizes. A couple of big thank yous here to Elise and the team at Orbix of Fly July for making this all possible. Thank you to them. Thank you to Callum from FS Elite, who's helped us with promotion, but more importantly, is here in the hot seat of moderating, trying to keep us all on time and on track. And now, let me take you to the first of what is going to be three prize giveaways over the course of the next 90 minutes. My co-founder and colleague Phil has put together six names. These winners are going to take home Firstly, uh, winner's choice of an Aerosoft downloadable product. That is going to, and I apologize because I'm sure I'm going to mispronounce some names here. Uh, we'll see how that goes. That's going to 
Grant. So Grant, we'll talk about how you can claim that prize. Just Flight has donated a winner's choice of their product. That goes to Sizzling Popcorn, one of our broadcast partners. Awesome. Congratulations on the Just Flight product of your choice. Good time to pick up the Warrior, maybe, that just came out. Milviz has given away a Corsair from Microsoft Flight Simulator, that World War II era bomber, to Hysham underscore S92. We've got two Orbix prizes. Pick anything you want on Orbix Direct. Ethan and Heza737, congrats to both of you. And TFDI Design, winner's choice of a product goes to Fly Dr. Corvette. So congratulations to the six of you. Now, those six people that I just named, as well as everybody else who wins today, you're going to get an email from me today or tomorrow. You have exactly 24 hours from when you get that email to respond to it and claim your prize, or it is going to somebody else. So check your email, check your spam filters starting tomorrow morning, and make sure that you reply within 24 hours. There will be lots of more opportunity to get in on the giveaways in the next couple of moments. So stay with us all the way through today's presentation, and we'll talk more about how you can do that. Let me now jump into one more thing before I hand things over to the panel, and that is our developer chat. So we've got the developer chat happening today as well as the live panel. We've invited developers from across the community to participate. For those who couldn't be on video, they can hang out with you in the chat. So developers who are watching, say hello. Use this as your opportunity to connect with the community and share your perspective alongside those who are commenting on the chat. And let's get things going. Callum, a uh, real big thank you to you for moderating today. I will hand over control for the next 45 minutes, and let's have a great show. Evan, thank you so much for the introduction and hello to everybody at home who is watching the first cross community uh, discussion. So my name is Callum. I am from FSLE, as Evan has said, and today I'm going to be the moderator looking after all of our fine panelists today. So without further ado, we're going to go through each of them just so they can introduce themselves to those of you who are watching. And we're going to begin with Aerosoft. Hello. Good evening from Germany. Uh, I'm Winfried, uh, CEO and founder of Aerosoft. Aerosoft is located at the airport of Paderborn in Germany. And uh, Aerosoft is mainly a publisher and a distributor of hardware, as well as the worldwide publisher of the Microsoft Flight Simulator Retail Box and uh, Explain Retail Box. Fantastic. So it's really fantastic to have you uh, today, Winfried. Um, now let's head over to helisimmer.com. If you could just tell us your name, where you're located, and quickly just describe exactly what you do for the community. Hey, thank you, Callum. Hey, everyone. My name is Sergio. I am the founder of um, helisimmer.com, a website dedicated to helicopter flight simulation. And I am in Portugal. It's really nice to be here with all of you. Thank you for having me. Wonderful. It's a pleasure, as always, to have you on any panel, Sergio, uh, and welcome. Uh, now we're going to head over to Hype. Hey, everyone. I'm Steve, uh, co-founder of Hype Performance Group, new developers to Microsoft Flight Simulator for the Airbus H135 and Airbus H145 helicopters. Uh, our team is multinational, um, but I am in Tampa, Florida, and we're just happy to be here amongst a great community of developers. Thank you, Steve, and welcome to, to the panel. Uh, we're now going to head down under over to Orbex. If you could say hello, that'd be great. Hi, my name is Anna. I'm the CEO of Orbex. Um, I am located about an hour and a half out of Sydney. Our main office is in National Fields in Victoria. And we've got a team in the UK as well. So welcome to everybody that is watching that. It's six or nine for me a.m., uh, which is probably better than some of the other guys here. Um, we make scenery. Um, we started off with airports. Uh, John started the company in 2006, and um, we've been um, uh, developing recently for Microsoft Flight Simulator. We've been doing other uh, lines of products like cities, uh, so uh, we're definitely known for scenery more than anything else, although we're trying with uh, aircraft a little um, as well. And um, thanks for um, hosting this and um, looking forward to the panel. Excellent. I think we all are. Thank you very much, Anna. It's great to uh, have you on the panel. Uh, and now we're going to head back over to the States and we're going to have an introduction from Parallel 42. That's me. Hi, everyone. Uh, Edson, Managing Director with Parallel 42, one half of the team. Uh, hi, Kevin. 
Uh, we built uh, very immersive products in P3D, and uh, for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, we brought you the Sky Park and the recently announced uh, Freedom Fox, Trent Palmer's legendary aircraft, coming soon. Based in Kansas City, Missouri, just across from KMKC, downtown Charles B. Wheeler Airport. Hi, happy to be here. Thank you, Edson. Always a pleasure, as always, to have you on any panel as well. And by no means least, uh, last but not least, um, we have TFDI Design. And I promise you, I didn't put you last. It's just in alphabetical order. Oh, it's okay. Now I know. <laughs> now, uh, hello, I'm Colin. I'm the CEO of Invernix slash uh, TFDI Design. We are application and uh, aircraft developers. You might know us for PAX at a 717, and now hopefully soon the MD-11. Soon, soon. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, thanks for hosting us, and thanks for having us. No. Oh, and of course the location, uh, not too far from Tampa ourselves. Yeah, your backgrounds are completely different. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you so much to all the panelists who are joining us today. We have a really action-packed uh, 90 minutes, so we're just going to try and keep the pace going. I've got a bunch of questions that have been submitted by the community, um, and we're going to really dive into some of um, some quite interesting subjects. So the first question we have is from FS Magazine. So I'm just going to read it out to you, and then we're going to jump in with uh, some answers. So almost one year into the release since Microsoft Flight Simulator, of course, that's going to come up. How has this uh, new simulator impacted our community? Does this release change your view of how established simulators, such as Aerofly, Prepared, or Xplane, has an impact on the platform? And finally, all within this same question, do you think you'll be able to continue to develop for multiple simulators at the same time, or do you think your plans in the future will move towards a more Microsoft Flight Simulator only future? And if I could hand that question over to Aerosoft to start uh, the discussion. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Of course, uh, nobody expected uh, in 1919, uh, in 2019, a new flight simulator. So, uh, of course, the announcement and the release of the Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, had a very big impact uh, to the whole community. Uh, it was a multi-million dollar project with uh, marketing budgets of uh, which are higher than the turnover of most of the uh, flight sim companies. So, uh, of course, there was a big impact. Um, and, of course, um, FSX and P3D are based more or less on the same old Microsoft Flight Simulator platform. And um, yeah, I see the new Flight Simulator as a successor. Uh, is it correct? Uh, I hope so. Uh, sorry for my English. Um, of the um, old Microsoft franchise. So to be honest, I see for the next year uh, that products for P3D and FSX will more or less disappear from the market. Um, Aerofly it was always difficult because it was a local simulator with local sceneries. It depends on the development. They have some good ideas, but they have a very small team and it, it will be very hard for them um, to get a market share beside Xplain and Microsoft. Uh, regarding Xplain, um, yeah, we expect uh, an upcoming Xplain 12 uh, sooner or later and of course Aerosoft will support Xplain in the same way we have supported Xplain in the last years. So uh, I see the, yeah, I see, I, I feel it is necessary to have a second choice for flight simulation people to say, okay, we have Microsoft Flight Simulator, but if you don't like things inside Microsoft Flight Simulator, there is a second choice. And uh, I think that's, uh, very good. Um, and of course, Xplain is a simulator which is uh, 
we are allowed to simulate professional uh, in the professional side and microsoft clearly said our simulator is a hobby simulator and it is not allowed to use microsoft light simulator for professional uh, uses so explain will always be a little bit more dedicated to professional pilots uh, and to the really strong high-end community hobbyist pilots absolutely um so i just want to take the discussion over to anna because you mentioned in your intro that you've developed for all of the simulators do you have any comments on on what you think the future is for all these platforms um i think that I don't want to anticipate too much of what's coming up, but you know, the Xbox is also going to introduce a whole set of new audience. So we're really going to have a, a number of platforms that address the needs or the wishes of different kinds of users. So um, from my perspective, from all this, you know, what in, in our roadmap, um, we definitely continue to develop for all of them. Um, now, Aerofly is a small market, so we've got a few products there. Uh, we haven't really done anything for a while, but uh, we will continue to support the users for each uh, for each platform, in, including P3D. Uh, so we're definitely not pulling out of that. Good. Anyone else want to jump in on on this conversation? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, the only thing I would say, I agree, you know, the choice is always best for the community. Um, I think we will see the simulators continue to branch off and maybe specialize in some different type of characteristics that that user base is looking for. So I think that's always going to be a great thing. And also the developers, especially us here, we're going to show up to where those communities are. If there's a user base there, no developer is going to completely abandon that platform. So I want to just uh, ask Colin then, just for a second. Um, so you're currently developing your MD11, so for prepared. So where do you kind of see the market for yourselves at the moment? So, I mean, I think there's always been a strength in portability. Um, the MD11 currently we have slated to come out for both uh, MSFS, assuming that we'd hit, we don't hit any technical roadmaps, as well as P3D. I think eventually down the road, as Winfried said, it, it is possible that MSFS could become a successor to some of the sims we know now, but there's, I just think there's certain limitations in the way and that that might not happen in the next couple of years. Uh, I might disagree there. So I think, you know, it's, it's something we've seen in other industries where you've got, you know, you've got PS4, Xbox, Switch, desktop, you know, PC, you've got all these different platforms and certain titles that become really well known work on all of them. I think that might end up being something that is brought into our industry a little more where that portability is key to creating a compelling product. Very interesting. Edson, you were going to say something uh, just a moment ago. Yeah, I think there's space for overlap, right? So uh, at that expo, we announced on stage uh, the Sky Park, and it was to be exclusive to Prepare 3D. Uh, <laughs> little did we know that sitting in the bar later, uh, we would see a video at E3 of, of 2020 being teased, right? And then radio silence as we on the back end sat and said, well, where's the best place for the sky park? And so we brought it to 2020, right? A business decision, but also a decision for the, the best experience of our, of our customers. Uh, I think that there's space for uh, a company to have multiple portfolios Right, we have our P3D portfolio of tools. We've got our 2020 portfolio of tools uh, now expanding into aircraft and scenery as well. Uh, and there's room for that. I mean, wh why would we not? There's this professional market sitting in P3D. We're still getting business development opportunities in P3D. It's not over yet. Yeah. This is not. This is not. Uh, sorry, Colin. Uh, this is not the first time we have this conversation. If if, if not at um at this formal level, which we are doing right now, but this is not the first time it happens, right? We have been hearing this for years. Every, every time there's a new version of a sim, um, well, first of all, we have the community saying, oh, look, it's going to kill every every other sim out there. But the truth is that there is space, there is room for, for all of them. And I'm the only thing that I think uh, is really quite interesting in my perspective 
is the actual leap. Well, first of all, it's, it's the, the fact that it was a complete surprise. Like Edson was saying, we, are, we were just hanging out on bars and uh, talking to each other during Flight Sim Expo, and all of a sudden, bam, you know, we, we were at the epicenter of everything that is, was related to flight simulation, and we had this huge bomb um, being dropped on us from, from, uh, from E3. But I was saying that I think that the most interesting part of all of this, it's the, gi the giant leap that Microsoft Flight Simulator is actually um, taking in regards with the previous version. So I, I think that is what actually rocked the boat more. And of course, you know, the, the giant marketing um, that Microsoft has put behind it and the fact that it's coming to Xbox, et cetera. So I, from my perspective, not as a developer, but from someone that is working with developers, I think there's going to be room for everyone for quite some time. Uh, there are things that you can do in, in P3D and X-Plane that you still can't do in 2020, and we won't be able to do for some time to come. So the runway is a very long one, and we'll see what happens at the end of that runway, right? But we're still, we're still early roll here. There's Agreed. still time. Yeah, absolutely. And I just I want to come back to the whole community question at the beginning of, of what FS Magazine were asking. So I'm just going to go to you, Sergio, but what have you seen happen in the community um, since that announcement and kind of where we are almost a year since its release? Well, one of the things that we knew that was going to happen and that, that was something that right from the start we realized um, because we know that Microsoft has the ability to do that and to play uh, the marketing, um, play, the, play their marketing very well, was um, a bigger amount of people coming into flight simulation or returning to flight simulation because we had a lot of people actually returning to sims, people that completely um, abandoned sims for quite some time. And now they saw Microsoft Flight Simulator and it was very interesting and they, they thought it was very interesting. So we are seeing more people coming into flight simulation. <clears throat> but unfortunately, we are also seeing a bit of um, negativity in the community because of the fact that we are going to have Xbox players with us now. And I know that this is something that <laughs> all of you in Nelson is laughing already because he, know, he knows exactly what I'm talking about. And yeah, I'm sure pretty much all of you have seen this negativity in the community. We don't even have the this version out and we already have people complaining and being very <laughs> critic and uh, almost Poisonous. Well, not almost. I think, yeah, they, they are. They are. They are poisonous. They are being. Uh, they are, you know, injecting poison into the community just because, for some reason, they see these Xbox newcomers as uh, something very bad, which I tend to agree on one side and tend to disagree on one side. And why do I agree and disagree? Because, as with anything, when you increase numbers, you get more of the good and more of the bad. So are we going to see more bad things? Yes. But we are also going to see a lot more of good things as well. It's just a matter of trying to keep communities constructive, push them forth so that they are positive. That's the whole, that's the thing. And that's what I think that people like myself and other people that are spearheading communities need to be doing so that everyone gets along and the experience with the community just is just unbelievable and very good. We all started somewhere. Imagine if we could have started with a $300 box instead of a $1,000 box. The market exactly. just grew. Yeah. I mean, you know, the future is now uh, much bigger than it ever has been for us. I think that's exciting for everybody. It doesn't matter what, uh, if you're a developer, media outlet, publisher, the fact that this community is growing is a phenomenal thing. And it hopefully, these types of panel discussions will give them that information as well. Um, so we've talked a little bit about the Xbox um, already. Uh, Anna's mentioned it, Sergio's mentioned it. Um, and the next question happens to come from uh, Captain Bob, who asks about the Xbox release. So he asks that because the Xbox release coming out next week, it will be the first time that a flight simulator, like a, a proper one, has been available on a home console device. 
which ultimately means we're going to have a lot of gamers uh, come and try this in possibly for the first time, and especially with the accessibility of Xbox Game Pass, where millions of people don't even need to buy the sim to be able to jump in and fly. So the question is for, for you, Colin, at TFDI. Um, so what do you think about having these gamers on Xbox coming into the hobby and coming into the simulation community? I think it can go one of two ways. I think if the technical requirements for us to for us as a, as a developer community to support it are there, and if we as a community foster the growth, I think it has the ability to, uh, as you know, Sergio said, to bring in an enormous amount of people. And I think we should be doing everything we can to welcome them into the industry. You know, that, that means great things for us as a community and and as developers. Um, but I also I do think it has the potential to create what is almost looked at as another platform. So you know, you'll have PC. Xbox, explain. You know, I, I think that could end up being that way too, depending on how it's implemented. But I think it'll be up to us to allow people to explore the interest and show them what flight simulation is all about, without having, like you said, without having to spend a thousand dollars on, you know, to get into it. That's a that's a huge air barrier to entry for a lot of people. You know, and flight. I'm going to say the, the awful G word. Flight games have always been popular here, um, and I think kind of having that bridge between the flight game on an Xbox and the super hardcore desktop stuff that we do, you know, now I think that's awesome to have. And it is, I think it'd be a bridge for a lot of people. I'm with you. Look, look at the title like uh, Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. So, so many people play Grand Theft Auto on a console, but then so many graduate into a PC. And that title has had a lifespan that is just... I mean, it's on God mode. Yeah. Really, 10 years now on that title. And it's still fresh. It's fresh because a modding community keeps it fresh. People continue to build on that game. Things to do, purpose in the game, mods that keep people interested, role play in that game. Yep. Just, you know, that's what PCs allow people to do. You can't do that on a console. You can't mod it on a console. But on a PC, you can. And so I agree there's this, this path that people can take into this community. And I think, and I'm going to put you on the spot. Uh, you are in a position where you're probably seeing uh, the amount of quality freeware developers that are coming out and reaching these payware levels. I mean, the number of freeware developers that are out now is it's unbelievable. It's like FSX days back again. Yeah, I, the world is a big place and there is a lot to do. So um, I think it's, I actually really like to see how the mods, you know, for scenery specifically have actually, are actually flourishing. I think it's actually good for all of us because it just shows what you can do. Uh, so there is no, um, there is definitely no issue. I mean, we do freeware as well. Um, and I think, I actually think that having that higher quality is pushing everybody higher. And this is good for everybody. There always competition is good for everybody, right? Because the, yep. the consumer wins out of it, wins because of the pricing, wins because of the, um, of the quality of it. Um, I think that if I can just go back to the, to the Xbox question, I actually think that the Xbox is going to bring flight simulation uh, to as many people as possible, and it's going to make it accessible. And I think this is great. So I, I, I really, really hope that with the introduction of the Xbox, there will be people that never thought about it, uh, but they also, you know, pick it up because they want to just explore stuff. We are all in lockdowns. You know, I don't know. Australia is in lockdown, you know, one after the other. So I don't know about you guys, but, you know, picking up your remote, um, uh, you know, p picking up the controller and just go and see places that you've never been before. And that's why we want to make it realistic. We want to make it, you know, so realistic that it's like being there. Um, and that, that I think, is going to be the power of bringing a cheaper uh, console into the house. And then it can become a... Um, you know, not just, you know, a gamer picking it up, but really sort of showing how big the world is and all of the fantastic things you can go and see this is this is my hope that the xbox is going to do um really recreate 
the world in great in great detail and bringing it to everybody. I think this is yes. the difference between what we've seen in the past from other flight games. This is the actual experience. This is a like for like PC on a console experience for all these new people. So I'm quite interested. I'm going to head over to, to Aerosoft and just ask, you know, people will want to download all these um, like airport packs and aircraft like the CRJ, for example. You know, how do you guys at Aerosoft feel about the Xbox? Oh, I think we froze. Oh, we see advantage, a big four flights. The entrance level into the flight simulation will go from, or let's say, dollar for high end. PC and the software. Yeah. I think it's connection problems. Yeah. To buy any. Yeah. Caleb, if I could, I just had, um, I did have one comment I wanted to make. Oh, sorry. So it is one third. Yeah, I think let's just, uh, let's just move uh, free for just a moment. Um, and uh, yeah, Steve, if you want to go ahead. Yeah, the uh, the other thing, you know, obviously we're talking about the community growing with the you know the influx of the Xbox players. I think the only way this can be negative Xbox. is how we accept these and players into the community. Um, that's really the only way this could turn out negatively. Um, you know, Anna brought up a great point of how it's already causing developers to think about you know this new you know this new influx of players, and we've even seen this from Asobo, which they're bringing these benefits that are going to benefit even the PC players in terms of the performance and also just making it a more accessible experience for these guys to even come into the community. And I mean, this is a, I don't want to say an argument, but this is kind of an opportunity that's going back for many years where even maybe real life pilots have always kind of maybe looked down upon on the flight simmer. So now we have this situation where now flight simmers are looking down upon these Xbox players where really, hopefully the idea is that they come in, they get a warm welcome, they graduate the PC maybe, and then maybe someday they even graduate to the actual real life aviation field. So I think we just all need to keep a positive outlook and do our best to receive them. Definitely. Amen. Here's a here's a bit of a curveball for you. Do you think it's about time we stopped uh, saying the word game in such a negative connotation? Because every time you see that in a comment section, or I'm probably going to get loads of comments now. You can't call this a game. Colin mentioned it. You know, ultimately, it's on a gaming console. So is it about time we drop this whole hate on the word game when we talk about uh, flight simulation? I think we're 20 years late, you know, <laughs> right? uh, yeah, that, that's, and that is something you, you guys know that and Essa knows that as well. This is, that's something that I, um, myself and, uh, some other simmers like Novo Wing 24 and Belgio, we actually bring it very often to the table. You know, it's, uh, just call it whatever you want, you know, because you yeah. can use it in whatever want you, whatever way you want. So is it again, do you need it? Do you need to call it a flight simulator to boost your ego somehow or something like that? Yeah, just call it I a flight simulator. I think it's time. I think it's time. Look, there was a time where pilots could say, look at you. You're sitting at a desk flying an airplane. Well, the future is, look at you. You're laying in your bed flying an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> You're leaning on the couch flying an airplane. The time is now. I mean, it's it's a game. And if, if somebody wants to correct it to it's a simulation, Cool. That was, a, that was the response I expected, to be honest. <laughs> Somebody had to ask. <laughs> so there and is a. I'm going to get flamed. I think we all probably are already anyway. Um, <laughs> but moving on from that, because I don't want the comments to explode and stuff on that uh, comment anyway. So um, there was a follow up one to the Xbox stuff. Now, I don't think any of us are going to know the answer, so this is going to be a, quite a good discussion point. But um, obviously, the Xbox platform itself, you know, the Xbox Series S is £249. I don't know what it is in your local currencies. And the Xbox Series X is like 449 So like you were mentioning earlier, super affordable. 
and from the videos, the very few videos that we've seen so far, performance seems fairly stable for those more intense areas. Um, but do you think that people will use this as an opportunity to get into the sim nice and cheap and get it running, but then use their Xbox for adding like home cockpit type of builds and, and stuff like that through the console? Or do you think people will stick to the PCs for the whole home cockpit side of things? Let's start with you then, Steve. Yeah, I think it's, it's interesting. And I'm thinking of myself because I, you know, first and foremost, I am a user in the sim world as well. And for me, I think of like the whole building up the home cockpit, I put that on like the hardcore summer level, not so much like the person who's just getting in. Cause at that point where you're willing to invest the money into a home cockpit, I, I think the first thing you probably want to do is invest in the, you know, the high powered PC as well. But, you know, a lot of this is kind of speculative too, until I actually can see this Xbox version for myself, because I'm, I know they've said no compromises, but there's, it seems like it's black magic, right? For them, they get this down to such a smooth experience on the, on the console hardware. So yeah, I think there's a lot of unknown there. I mean, I think the biggest thing, though, to your point, is just getting these people in and kind of letting their creativity flow. I'm sure there are going to be some people who will use the console as kind of their the centerpiece of these home cockpits, but I, I don't know how big the adoption of it will be. I mean, I guess it def you have to define what home cockpit is, because for some people, it could be just having you know, keyboard and mouse, or it could be having the full experience. Yeah. Like I mean, we were talking... Seen prior to going live about the, the Turtle Beach, that hardware looks incredible, you know, for something so kind of affordable, just plug and play. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's one of the questions, Callum. First of all, you need to define what is it, what, what is it that a home cockpit is for you? Because home cockpit can be something as simple as having a couple of monitors, a yoke, some pedals, a panel or something like that, and you know, you're set. And that's the first thing that you need to understand. And the second one is, uh, how far does the Xbox allow you to add other type of hardware? We know that um, a couple of uh, pieces of hardware, well, perhaps more than a couple, are already being developed or developed already. Um, but how far are uh, hardware developers going to be into the Xbox and bring their stuff into, make it compatible with the Xbox as well? Because a lot of these has to do with hardware or even can I get any data from the Xbox externally so that I can build my own hardware? Because a lot of cockpit builders actually make their, their stuff, right? And they make their stuff because the sim allows them to get data to and from the, the actual PC, the actual computer, the software. So I think those are the three things, the three main things that we need to understand in the future. Um, because if the hardware um, handles everything as you know at least microsoft is telling that is going to handle if we have enough hardware outside hardware external hardware to use it and if people can get this idea or send this idea into the sim there is a lot of potential it's completely different for you to actually spend through two or three thousand dollars on a computer or 250 or even 400 or 500 dollars on on a console so <clears throat> we need to we need to be able to get the answers for these three questions first. Yeah, my coffee table has a lot more real estate than my desk. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's bragging. Surrounding myself with hardware on my Xbox. <laughs> Before we move on, does anyone else have any uh, comments about the Xbox release or hardware? No, I take that as a no. Did you um, all have trouble finding one? Who who here you found in one? this panel? Who has an Xbox and is ready? Okay, not nah, okay. Oh, oh here he comes! Saying, show of hands. In Australia, in Australia, we're short of vaccines and Xboxes. It seems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, Interesting man. show of hands. I tried. They are out of is stock it? within a hundred miles around me. I might have a hookup. <laughs> okay, we'll have to we'll have to link up after. <laughs> oh no, you've you've cut out again. I'm afraid. Uh, just on the punchline. <laughs> right. <laughs> Suspense. Dan. What we'll do, we're we'll during the break. We'll try and get the connection back 
um, and then we can quickly just cover that, what he wants to say about the hardware, because I'm sure it's going to be interesting um, from Aerosoft. I, I have a recommendation if somebody could just pass this on. Perhaps he could go no video so that it uses less bandwidth. We'd love to have his audio, you know? Lovely. I think Evan's going to try and help us out. That yeah. bit. Perfect. Um, so I just want to move on because we can't spend this entire panel talking about Microsoft and the Xbox. There are still other simulators out there, as we've discussed earlier. Um, so this question is slightly different, and I think it's going to be a really interesting conversation. Um, so the question is, what impact does piracy have on our community? Um, and I think we'll take that over to Sergio to begin with as kind of the community representative here, and then we can see what the developers uh, think of that as well. Oh, I'm so glad this comes out on a panel and we are able to talk about it because it's, uh, it's very important that our community is aware of piracy and, it, and the damage especially because um, a lot of, uh, I think that very often people, people still don't understand that, um, even though we're not talking about, and uh, it's funny that Winfred was telling me uh, earlier off the record about, um, about the fact that uh, hardware is harder to pirate, obviously. Um, but we do get the notion that, well, if you go into a store and you just, you know, you grab some uh, pedals and you leave without paying, that's stealing and people understand that stealing. If you just copy someone's software, an airplane, an add-on, whatever, copy and paste it and bring it home or send it to a friend or something like that without him paying for him to use something that he should be paying because it's payware, people tend to see it as something in a gray area. It's not exactly stealing. It's not the same as grabbing those pedals, you know, the physical items and going home without paying. And I, I think people need to understand that it's as much stealing as grabbing that physical item and bringing it home without paying. And if it, it, it's not just a matter of stealing, you are hurting the developers, you are hurting the companies that do this. And a lot of the times, for some reason, I don't know where this comes from, you know, but people are against the fact that some people out there, some companies out there are, you know, for profit, which is kind of normal because people tend to want to put food on the table, right? And that's how they put food on the table. Some guys, some people are lawyers, some people are doctors, some people, you know, some work on whatever stores. And, you know, and these, these people that are behind companies, just such as yourselves, that's how you pay your bills. That's how you make money to pay rent and to put food on the table. And by stealing them from their, from their goods, by distributing these goods instead of getting others to buy it, you are actually reducing their profit. You are actually reducing the amount of money that goes into their companies. So they are making less money. And if this doesn't bother you from the humane side, you know, you are taking away money from people. Just look at the other panel, the other people in this panel, just look at their faces. It's, there are people just like you and me. And if you're, if that's not enough for you to understand that it's wrong to steal from other people, well, just be selfish and think that if you are not giving these companies the money that they need for them to continue to operate, they eventually, some of them will eventually give up developing products or stop supporting the product that you already bought or they are not going to do the next version of that piece of software that you love so much because there is no reason for them to continue to do so since they are not getting the money, okay? Yes, these are businesses. Yes, these are for-profit companies. This is what they do. They have decided to follow a passion to bring you and to bring me the products that we all love to use. Fortunately, this is something that the community is very aware. I, I've seen this in a lot of groups, people asking for links to get free versions of software and people just telling them, you know, go buy uh, and, and give them the links for the store so that people can actually purchase the products. And very often when someone tries to insist or someone joins the bandwagon and goes into, you know, oh, PME, I can get you a copy. These guys are usually banned from the groups. So fortunately, we do have 
a big awareness from the community and people are really active and they actually um, get to moderators and tell tell us that you know this guy is trying to is trying to to pirate software etc cetera, etc. Cetera. So there there is a there is a lot of awareness in the community and I'm really happy that that happens. Piracy is not a joke. Piracy really hurts companies and it hurts business and it, it hurts the community down the road. Sorry, I'm just way too passionate. <laughs> I could I could be the whole many minutes talking about this. I mean yeah, this. Um... There's obviously some developers within this group as well. So I don't know, Anna, do you want to kind of go from a developer's perspective? Yeah, I mean, you know, kind of Sedge touched on all of the points um, there. So it's not a lot more to add to that. Um, I do think that uh, I just want to maybe use slightly different language to the, you know, profit thing. The And this is probably more from, from my perspective, the, the profits for us get invested in to make products better. So this is not about, you know, getting rich. I, I don't, we're not getting rich on it. I don't think anybody here is really getting rich on it. Um, the, uh, for us really, the, the, we, we are, we transform Orbix into a company that is giving full-time jobs to people and you kind of have to pay them and you want to pay them enough so they you know continue to do it and they don't go and do something else um and so i actually think that um the the you know the piracy is re really hurting m maybe even firsthand those people that are actually trying to have a full-time job doing something they really like instead of doubling up being you know a school teacher or a doctor or lawyer or something. I don't know any lawyers that do development, frankly, but um, they probably make enough money being lawyers, actually. But if you, you know, if you have another job and then, you know, offline, you kind of do, um, the, you know, the, you do development. So I do think that that's really what is hurting most, most of all. And um, I would steer away from this idea that we are kind of, you know, super commercial and we try to make lots of money out of it um, because it's just, it's just not true. In fact, what we're trying to do is to uh, make our prices. Uh, it, you probably have noticed that uh, Orbix has made its prices a bit lower on the Microsoft platform, um, trying to get the volumes out of it so that we actually pay off for the products. And I can tell you lots of our products Maybe you know the investors in my company wouldn't be happy to hear this, but a lot of our products actually don't even break even. But so why do we do them? Because we think it's a good thing to do, right? It's a, like sometimes you make a movie, you don't make any money out of it, but you think it's a good thing to do. And so we continue to do this because um, I believe that the better the simulator becomes, the more people it will attract. So I think eventually we will create a larger group of people that are you know, accessing the simulator and um, and the community um, will grow. So that, that's really why we are investing the money also in loss making products. Don't say this to my investors. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just, just, I think we all started with a journey, right? I mean, we all probably worked for someone else before having the incredible opportunity to work for ourselves. And, you know, I'm happy uh, and very proud that I get to call it my full time job, right? Having left Silicon Valley, Anna, you remember the the journey for me personally for parallel 42 personally. Yeah, we were the first third party partner in the Orbex store. And we came with an idea, a concept, a plan, and the rest really is history. And we are where we are today. And we're proud to be able to call this our full time job. But we can really only do that with that community support, right? Because it is a business. We have to eat. I have to pay rent. Um, we need internet to be on these calls. Um, but I, I've got a very uh, interesting other perspective. Um, we also don't spend too much effort. Uh, I don't know if lamenting is the right uh, word for this, but over piracy um, because... I'll be frank, I spent uh, many of my childhood years in a third world country, and I know what it's like to be in a country where you cannot go out and buy a legitimate DVD of anything or a legitimate CD of anything. And there isn't enough bandwidth to download anything. 
everything is piracy. Retail stores are piracy. <laughs> uh, printed covers, you know, catalogs on catalogs, walls filled, Microsoft Flight Simulator, absolutely. Orbex collections, Aerosoft collections. I, I have photographs. But that's what life is like in those countries, right? Shout out to Bolivia and the people watching. Um, so we just kind of understand that it's going to happen. We understand that it's going to exist. So we do the best that we can to kind of slow it down, but then we just keep moving forward without spending too much energy on it. To be very honest, that's been our stance at Parallel 42. If I actually, uh, it, on a kind of piggybacking on that, our approach at a TFTI has always been kind of very similar. We don't spend a, a ridiculous amount of money or effort on DRM. We have it. We have DRM. But I think the the easiest, uh, may, easiest is maybe the wrong phrase. One of the main ways we focus on DRM is trying to remind everybody that we're people. And I know we've talked about that a lot. And I'm not going to beat the dead horse. But I think that is the number one thing that people forget. Now, I don't know of anybody in this industry that is like, oh, yeah, look at my Lamborghini. You know, <laughs> that's not we all all the discussions I've had with, you know, the people on our team and with partners is we, we want to offer full time jobs. We want to give careers to people doing what they love. We all want to create these products that we are excited to play and see and fly or whatever it is. That's the motivation. And as long as you think about, hey, I'm taking from that person, not some nameless, faceless company somewhere. I think that's that's the thing. That's uh, the as human well, factor. Our, our idea. Um, we have seen most of the people using piracy copies are not customers, and they will not become customers. Uh, because they are kids or they are living in countries where it is not a, uh, possible to download things and so on. So if you have, let's say, 1,000 piracy copies, perhaps 20 or 30 of them might become customers. The rest would never become customers. So there is not such a big loss for the uh, developers. Some really interesting points. I just want to just involve Steve in this conversation. So um, if you're not already sure, just to catch people up to speed. So Steve, you've you've made a freeware for Microsoft Flight Simulator and you're heading into the, the payware market. So could you like talk a little bit about some of the development process that goes on behind the scenes that, you know, is required to be able to get a product to like a payware uh, standard in support of this conversation? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the big thing I wanted, I would even start off with even before jumping into that is what Sergio and Edson both kind of mentioned, which is outside of the human element of us as developers, also think about the impact on the development of products for the simulator. I think some developers are a lot less likely to take risk either with their careers like Edson did, or even with the products that they develop, if there's that big risk of piracy there. Um, so in terms of your question though, directly, that move from P uh, freeware to payware, the big thing is, like Sergio said, you have to put food on the table and if there's only a certain plateau of quality that you can get to with freeware. Um, our team burnt ourselves out probably for three months straight creating the freeware. We all have full-time jobs, come home from that, come home to our families, sacrifice family time to put that hours into the freeware project. So now with going payware, we have the resources where maybe we can take a lower job or maybe we can quit our jobs altogether as long as the results are there. So that's really, you know, that's why I say it, it really hurts the community more than anyone. Like, of course it hurts us, but we can all go and find another job in Silicon Valley, go work at a tech company, whatever, but it hurts the community more because you're going to lose that talent if you're driving developers out of the community due to piracy. Thank you very much. Does, um, before we wrap up and head on a break, was there anything else anyone wanted to touch on that subject? I, I think uh, the community should, or the developers, should really tell the community how difficult. <laughs> He's cut out oh, again. We were doing so well there for just a second. We'll get that, sorted after. We'll get that sorted after the break. Um, so it's coming up to 5-2. Um, I'm going to hand the reins back to Eva now, who's going to introduce the break. And we'll be right back for the next set of questions from the community. 
Thanks so much, Callum, and thank you to the panel. Uh, phenomenal stuff so far, really interesting conversation, and I promise to get you back there as soon as possible, but we're going to do another opportunity for folks to win some prizes, and in the background, we'll give Callum and Winfrey the chance to try and help get ourselves ready to go again on the live stream and getting his audio all sorted out. So great time to enter our contest now at flightsimassociation.com slash contest. We've had over 400 people enter the first time around. This is your second opportunity, so if you have already entered enter again and if you are entering for the first time that's fine too we are going to be drawing eight prizes in about 30 seconds from now so go ahead and do that and i will just speak to aerosoft briefly uh, this is a huge thank you to winfried who's doing this from a saturday night on vacation because he's helping to backfill for matthias who was originally on today's presentation we've got some t uh, connection issues with the wi-fi that's available there so he's doing this as a little bit of a favor to us he's got some great insights and i hope we can get at least his audio back and that's what we're going to try for for the second half and the next sort of 35 minutes as we get going so we appreciate Winfried filling in and if we can't have him today we'll certainly have him back on in a future panel so uh, let me go back and let's do our second round prize draw here before we go back to the live panel this prize draw has eight donated prizes from some of the organizations that you see both on the video as well as in the text, starting with, as they would say, NZA simulations or NZA simulations, as we would say here. And that is a Nelson scenery in South Island, New Zealand with 9,000 hand-placed objects, 50 custom buildings. That's going to C.A. So congratulations to you. Hype Performance Group has donated their H145 early access bundle from Microsoft Flight Simulator to Meyer. I hope I'm saying that one right. Milviz has got the Beaver from Microsoft Flight Simulator product coming soon. So maybe you'll have the chance to get it before everybody else, but you'll certainly get it for free if your name is Carta Joal, if I said that one correctly. Apologize if I didn't. Two more Orbix prizes. This is for anything on the Orbix Direct store. We've got Gibbo Ireland and SKM Connell, or SK McConnell maybe, 361. Congratulations to both of you. We'll talk more about how you can claim those. TFDI Design, winner's choice of any TFDI Design product is Martin from Big Radials, the P-40B Tomahawk World War II aircraft used by Russia, Australia, England, America. That goes to Biscuit Man. And MK Studios, who's donated a new copy of their Ponta Delgada scenery for Microsoft Flight Sim or P3D in the Azores. That goes to Jax Daniels. So congratulations to everyone who has entered. Keep on entering. If you haven't done the second round yet, you'll still have another opportunity. We've got 14 more prizes to go. And those 14 more prizes, they include Tism. the opportunity to win a yoke from our friends at Honeycomb. Uh, Callum, you're back on audio now. How have we managed to make things go on the panel discussion side? Are we ready to go back into the second half? Yeah, I think so. Uh, we've got a picture of uh, Winfried's ceiling. Um, so I'm not quite <laughs> sure where he is at the moment. Um, but hopefully we can, we can get some audio come through from him because I'm sure he's got plenty to say. So it'd be really good to hear it. But, Very good. Well, I'll hand uh, things over to you then for the second half, and we'll do our next prize draw in about half an hour. So we've got four questions to go. Good luck, everybody. Amazing. So welcome back, everyone. Hope you enjoyed that short break, and uh, congratulations to those who won some awesome prizes. Um, so we're going to jump straight back in with the second half of these questions. And again, these have all come from you guys in the community at home. So we've got uh, another question here. Um, so seeing as how the latest sim has a wealth of new technology powering the simulation itself, what future technology or features do you want to see come next in support of your, de uh, in support of your development products in the future? And uh, Edson, we're going to start with you at Parallel 42 on that question. <laughs> if I don't start this response with access to the camera system, <laughs> I will be attacked. Uh, we're known for chase plane, man. Uh, we want access to the camera system. Uh, we need access to more data points to further enrich the sky park. Uh, data, data, data. There's still a lot of data that we can't touch with external applications. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do uh, with maintaining an ecosystem uh, in the sim that will be uh, conducive to running on a platform like Xbox. 
So I see the business case for it, but on the other side of that is the business case for these third-party developers that have been fully embraced and fully uh, showcased uh, to be able to deliver the products we are uh, well known for and established with. Data. <laughs> <laughs> I can, uh, if I can jump in there, I can kind of second that too, as far as the SDKs and stuff. I mean, uh, we've, we've run into limitations in the current Sims and I mean, MSFS is, uh, that's a whole nother animal. That's, that's a big thing for us too, is give up, don't, don't put the training wheels on us. Let us, let us have the freedom to do some of these things because once you take the, uh, limitations off, I think some pretty impressive stuff will happen. But then, uh, the other side of that stability, I think, uh, as an industry, we're kind of running this way down the street where our features, I think, and our additions are advancing faster than the stability and reliability and the performance in a lot of areas. And I don't want to see us fall on our faces metaphorically as we get too far you know, and, and our feet are too far behind us. So I think um, I implore anybody that, you know, if Microsoft, you're watching me or anybody else is listening, please. Uh, reliability is a feature. Thank you, Colin. Anyone else want to jump in on, on that question before I start doing some curveballs? Uh, yeah, if, if I may. Um, I um, I think that the uh, the thing I'm mostly looking forward to is fast bandwidth. Um, I bought myself Starlink, um, so, you know, waiting for it. Um, the fact that Microsoft has been able to uh, stream two petabytes of data, you know, in real time, especially with the Xbox kind of condensing that down. I think it's a really uh, fantastic opportunity now to open up the world to become a digital digital twin. So this is something that I've been thinking about for some time, uh, having this kind of replica of the world with, you know, it's not just about flying, but it's about doing other stuff in the on land um, and really having that engaging experience with you know ar sort of fantastic fantastic stuff I, I, you know I, I guess i sort of tried it many many years ago the technology was just not there so that is super exciting to know that there will be high bandwidth we can stream stuff in real time we can interact in real time we can have 4k textures without crashing anything um and having that level of maybe 8k textures one day you know uh, but having that high level of realism, that is uh, all over the world. Super. I sign for that right now. Awesome. So I'm going to just take away the whole Microsoft component from this question. And I'm not, we're not going to mention specific simulators and stuff, but what technology would you like to see in other platforms that could enable you to like send this uh, focus of development away from particularly one platform? Maybe, uh, maybe Winfried, if you want to start with that, if your connection's better for us. Okay, cool. Uh, Steve, maybe uh, we can jump in with that one on you. Yeah, um, so this one, you know, in full transparency, our team is absolutely focused on Microsoft Flight Simulator as a platform with no immediate plans to go to other platforms. But Essen had mentioned earlier in the stream, the portability to other platforms. I would think that would be the biggest advantage for any of us to really embrace these other platforms would be first the portability and then second, just they would they would have to continue to compete with Microsoft Flight Simulator. They're either they either have to be neck and neck, you know, trying to do the same thing, or they need to branch off and really specialize in something like DCS World specializes in the extreme detail and the combat. You know, it would need to be a product that does that for it the that makes sense for us to divert resources to to other platforms there. Very good. Uh, Sergio, I know you're not a developer per se, but you know what sort of technology would excite you in, in these simulators moving forward? Mm, helicopters. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. 
I, I fed you that. I yes. fed you that. Yes. yes, and I had I I had to I just had to follow that path. <laughs> but very seriously, um, I'm not I'm not a developer. I don't develop add-ons, but I you know I, I'm a, I'm a developer. I have developed um, software for over 20 years, um, and I've I've always been um, talking with developers and working with developers. I work with a lot of different developers, help them with their products, not as a developer, but um, on product product development, etc. Um, I, I wouldn't say that there's a technology that I would like to see on any specific or on a, in any g general um, sim, but what I would like to see well, what would be for companies, for uh, the developers of the sims to start using the tools um, that are becoming more common. For example, um, Blender for 3D, other technologies um, for uh, like F1, for example, for, for sounds, et cetera, et cetera, which will probably help a lot in getting um, your products on other platforms, just like Steve was saying, you know, it's not what, what he was saying would be a dream for you to have an ability to um, migrate your work to other platforms, but we are not going to see that happening because that would, be, would mean that the developers would have to work together so that there was a format that was pretty common between each other. But if you do have the tools and if you'd have the plugins, for example, to export a 3D model from the 3D software to X-Plane or to P3D or to, F or to uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator or Fly FS2, et cetera, et cetera, that would be a, a huge help. So it would be very nice to see developers starting to adopt those tools, those common tools, that common tier the bottom tier so that we could developers could build from them um to the top um, that that's pretty much it i've been thinking about the question and it's kind of interesting because there was a point in time where the answer to that would have been oh to fly over the world and have it <laughs> be like the real thing below and satellite imagery everywhere and yet here we are right the future is now and so we have to push the envelope again right as developers we have to sit and we have to think and we have to answer that question right there internally what is it that the people would want to see maybe it's a third party that delivers that maybe it's a sobo maybe it's lockheed martin maybe it's uh laminar uh the future is a really interesting question right now because we've come an incredibly, incredibly far distance already with this platform. Mm -hmm. I've got no solid answer for that one, man. Yeah, I think it's helped that technology has, like the internals of our PCs, the fact we can have this on a, a gaming console has helped to that push that, those envelopes and you know, data streaming and as, as Anna was mentioning, the fact we can stream in all that data is definitely gonna help. Um, with the future of that. Um, so I'm gonna move on just a little bit from the technology side, and I wanna focus a little bit more on the development side. So our next question comes from Flight Sim Geeks. Um, it's a long question, so bear with me. There's a little bit of um, information beforehand, but all will become clear. So they say, uh, Microsoft Flight Sim has created the next generation of developers some of whom are releasing what experienced simmers might call incomplete products, whilst other brand new companies are creating high quality add-ons. And this is very much um, the focus in the freeware side of things as well, he says. So the question I'm gonna ask to Steve, obviously with your current, um, your release. Um, so how do you feel about kind of the freeware market? What experience have you had within the freeware market? And do you think this new sim has kind of invoked that freeware, um, you know, that collaborative approach um, across the new sim? Yeah, I think, um, honestly, I think what's happened so far has been great. Um, Anna was kind of commenting earlier on that, the creation of a lot of scenery. Um, I think that the platform itself, just because of the accessibility of the SDK, has obviously spawned this whole new generation of developers. Um, even us ourselves, we saw with our Airbus H135 as we were creating that, the amount of people joining our Discord, you know, day by day who created their first scenery for the first time or created their first delivery for the first time. So it's great to see that. And 
I think the other thing too, like we all said earlier, we all start somewhere in this community. So it's great that these people are coming in at the freeware level. Maybe they stay there, or maybe at some point they graduate like us into the, the payware side. I think the biggest thing though, to kind of make out there is that there isn't this exact equation where, where the dollar or the freeware amount really equates to quality any longer. It really is, you know, you have freeware developers who are exceeding the quality of payware developers sometimes, and then you have the opposite, you know, also happening. So I just think it, it's really great that we, we just have the community there available and that the freeware is in such large quantity and that there's, you know, great platforms that make that accessible to the community right now. So yeah. at, at the start, uh, we functioned with a very closed door mindset at Parallel 42, yeah? Um, we have to deliver awesomeness. We have to focus. Uh, and then as this community of, of developers grew and as uh, wonderful resources like FlightSim.2 uh, came to be, we started to identify a lot, a lot of great talent out there. Uh, and it's safe to say now we function with a very open door policy. So if you think you're building something awesome, contact us because we're hiring and stuff. Um, we want to identify what these next big things are, who these next big thinkers are, because we want them on our team, right? This, I think this is the way things are going to advance. That could be a payware developer that exists today and we function as a partner, or it could be some kid in Bolivia that pirated flight sim that we're going to make possible for him or her to be able to afford to pay for it and to feed their family by putting them to work. And I'm open to all those scenarios. And I think that that really, it boils down to the simple fact that we're seeing a lot of great quality out there from both free and from the competition in the water and payware. Amazing. Think, uh, oh, sorry. No, you go ahead, Colin. I think there there's always going to be a space for for freeware and like you know any type of user generated market like that. I think I mean it's the reason that our company even exists. We started off years ago doing freeware work, and it got it wasn't originally set out to be a big for profit you know business or anything. It was it was the passion first, and I think that that the freeware market is a huge part of that. And it's a uh, it also it's just it's in barrier to or sorry it's not it. Let me try that again. Let me actually get this out in one continuous sentence here sorry it is a way to get over the barrier into becoming a developer too and you know and, and like it's in a saying there's a lot of talent that ends up becoming potentially partners or you know employees or you know even just colleagues and, and friends in the industry and i think that's that's huge so i, I think there's space for everybody hmm. definitely um, I, so I have, there's kind of a few follow-up questions within this. So I want to just bring them out to the table and see if anyone has any comments. Um, so I'm going to direct this one to you, Anna, because I think this is quite an interesting one. So um, obviously you guys at Orbex released the Optica, um, as you mentioned at the very beginning of the panel. A couple of weeks, I think maybe even a few months before that, a freeware version of the same aircraft type was released and I've seen it so many times. Why is there two of the same thing within this niche community? But from your perspective, you know, what do you guys do to, to justify the fact yours is a payware versus the fact there are freeware ones out there? Yeah, well, first of all, we had started developing the Optica long before the freeware was uh, launched. And so we were halfway through and we said, oh, there is a free version. Um, uh, it's Look, it's the same with uh, Innsbruck, for example. It's one of the premium airports in the Microsoft Simulator. And, you know, Jared was our, was our developer on it. Um, we kind of thought about whether we should, you know, you should do a version for for, for that. And uh, he did, and it's payware, and it, it's, you know, it's very successful. So I don't think that, um, uh, I think that freeware is, a, so first of all, freeware is also a, you know, try before you buy sometimes. So Orbix has got a lot of freeware because you just kind of, you know, you see, uh, you see how things are and what the quality is. So I, I'm in favor of that. Uh, you kind of learn skills and 
and um, uh, and you you know you get better. Uh, so we we had lots of developers that started to do freeware that started working for us. Um, uh, like I think Colin was saying this earlier. Um, in terms of the, sort of the you know having two copies of the same, uh, well you know there are a lot of lots of handbags uh, in the world, um, and um, you know or shoes. <laughs> female topics but you know like Louis Vuitton you know you, you kind of get you get a lot of um uh imitations and you get the real thing and you get the you know the free thing uh and I think it's uh, I I honestly I don't think it's a problem I think uh, it's just a just just different style of of the same thing and things get just executed differently so I, I don't have any I don't have any issues. I don't have any issues about you know other people doing the stuff that we do as well, uh, because and it, it has happened. So there are some of the products that are being developed by uh, others, and uh, it's okay. As I said, it's a big world. Uh, there is lots to do. So I want to get your take. Sorry, go on, Edson. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to ask Sergey for his take from like a community leader standpoint on the freeware payware um, argument. <laughs> Uh, well, I, I was I was kind of grinding, laughing at the beginning, and I think Edson was as well because you you t you touched the point here with that question that is really important and is really interesting, which is something that um, I have been publicly uh, talked about it as well, which is the fact that first of all. Um, this payware versus freeware thing, it's, it's, uh, it, it's nothing, it's again, nothing new. It's something that we always had in the community and some people just um, want to use payware and people just want to use freeware. You have freeware with um, as much quality, as, uh, as good as a quality as, as payware products, et cetera. So you have a mix of everything. And like Anna just said, you know, there are, there are a lot of different shoes in the world. There are a lot of uh, different, uh, handbags in the world. So it's uh, it's a matter of everyone picking up what they want to pick up and use what they want to use. But there's there's something that I really need to talk about and I really need to address. And I'm not going to take a lot of, a lot of time with this. But um, I, I think it's kind of a byproduct of what's happening with Microsoft Flight Simulator and the fact that we have a lot of people coming into the sim. And Edson is smiling already. He knows what I'm going to talk about. Yeah, I'll back you I'm up on this, man. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about specific companies or specific products, mm -hmm. but we have had um, quite a few payware products out there. There are just absolutely um, terrible. They are just terrible products. And um, some companies, some teams, some developers are just um, taking, in my perspective, they are taking advantage of this new huge amount of people coming into flight simulation. And I, I cannot express it in any other way except saying that they are taking advantage because these are people that they don't know better. They don't know better probably. They are new into the market. Um, they don't know products. Uh, they see a 3D model and they think, you know, okay, this is cool and I'm going to, this is very beautiful. I'm, I want to use this in the sim, but it ends up being products of very poor quality real, real poor quality. Um, and again, I'm not going to name names, but I've seen absolutely terrible things. And a lot of people um, have pointed me to blame it. And even in the 3D model, there are some very, very ugly errors that are just, you know, it, it, it's impossible for someone that actually takes more than 30 seconds looking at it and see it. So not against payware, not against where not, I think both work together, but please, people, when you are buying these products, just take a look at what you're buying and ask the community about them. Because we cannot let these companies, these teams, these people just take advantage of our, of our community, of you guys that are jumping into flight simulation because you enjoy aviation and you enjoy flying the sims and you are starting to enjoy the community. Please ask us what is it that we think that the guys that are on the on the community for longer think about the product before you put any money on it because you may be getting ripped off. That is the only comment that I wanted to do about uh, this payware thing. I, I think it's survival instinct, right? You see the market today and there are some names that should be 
big players and they're not some are not present some are partially present it's a survival instinct uh when we decided to pivot the sky park over it was a concept of here are your lego blocks what can you build what can you build with this this new platform to survive we can't bring chase plane our number one app our number one food you know uh application to eat every day to pay the rent we can't bring that over what do we do and some captains go down with the ship and some captains grab a bucket and start shoveling water out with the crew we did that we decided internally we have to stay afloat and we fought to stay afloat and we pivoted our business model to stay afloat we're not bringing you immersion packages we can't we're bringing you aircraft. We're going to bring you scenery. We're bringing you utilities. We can't bring you a camera system. We pivoted. And I think that it really boils down to survival instinct and how people decide to survive. Let me let me just I, I'm sorry. I, I don't want to take the whole time here, but just let, let me say something to Edson here. I don't think it's just um, the instinct to survive because I understand what it was it that you were talking about, but there are other developers out there that they they didn't have even have a business before. They are entering the market and they are bringing absolutely terrible products to, mar to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Yeah, I know it's it is. Easy. It's the easy I know end. it is. Yeah, that's the thing. So it's not even. I understand what you're saying. I agree with what you say, but it's not just that. So, sorry, Colin. No, no, this is exactly why I'm just here to, to moderate and guide you. Um, and Edson guided us very nicely and cleanly on to the, to the next question, which I think is what a lot of people are very interested to know. And that is kind of what your next six months looks like, whether that be for the simulator you're going to develop for or specific products you want to talk about. Um, and just very quickly, because we are kind of short on time at this point, but also if you could touch on why you chose that path or why you chose that scenery or aircraft just you know, within a couple of sentences. And if Anna, we can start with you and what the next six months for Orbex looks like. Uh, yeah, well, we published our roadmap some time ago. So we sort of, with little variations, we're sort of trying to stick to that. So we've got a number of uh, city uh, coming up, the cities as, especially. Um, we, we do think that some of the cities really um, uh, benefit from that kind of handmade touch, you know, like, um, sort of craft it, so we craft that very carefully. Obviously, with the Xbox coming up, we've got a few products that we have optimized all of the loads um, uh, are sort of getting done uh, for those one. Uh, but we also, I'll just give a big plug to uh, Ben, my uh, technology guy. Uh, we've got Volanta, which is our flight tracker. So uh, that is quite a different, yeah, see, I still love that. Um, we love that tool. Um, it's really, um, a great platform for us to build on so that's free um, we're about to launch a premium version which will have some really kind of fancy um, stuff coming up but uh, i think it's a fantastic platform that unites the community you know it's uh, it kind of um, makes it uh, you know i think very entertaining and a little bit i hope addictive as well to just come back and kind of look at your flight stats and you know we've got to put a scoring system a point system over there uh, and we're just really trying to uh, listen to you know what people are saying and trying to make products as fast as we can and maintaining quality uh, at the same time, which is kind of hard. Uh, and uh, yeah, we also our marketplace has kind of grown very well. So we've got lots of partners and we love the partners. Uh, some of them have got phenomenal uh, products that we really love to spruik. Um, and so we just continue to do that. Thank you very much. An exciting six months coming up for, for Orbex then. Uh, let's jump over to, to Colin and what you guys are up to. Well, I'll answer the burning question first. Um, as far as the products are concerned, I know we, uh, we're trying to put the MD-11 fully in sim. I'd say you know, six months is a loose term, but uh, I know we're, we're pushing really hard to see that realized, hopefully in both P3D and MSFS. Of course, continuing to work with the community on uh, packs and getting that where it's supposed to be and 
smart car three and all that. And uh, and I actually touched on it too. There are some new, I think, vendor opportunities too out there and in marketplace. And the new sim kind of opens doors for us that I think we'd like to try to explore too. So hopefully, a uh, big, big, as much of a presence as we can establish in MSFS and uh, further just further refining our products. And if you could, in one sentence, tell us why you chose the MD11 as your current aircraft. Uh, well, the the, uh, the semi-sarcastic answer is, how could we not? Um, it's it made it just it just made sense. That's that's my answer. It just made sense. Uh, <laughs> shared a lot of code, shared a lot of knowledge with the stuff we already had. Uh, it was requested heavily by a lot of our community and customers, and it, I think it checked a lot of boxes for everybody. Brilliant. Thank you very much, uh, Steve. We're going to jump down to you. Obviously, you've talked about the uh, the helicopters you're working on. Is that kind of within the next six months for you? And, you know, again, the same question. How did you get to to decide that in one sentence? Yeah. So probably within the next six months. Of course, next month we have the first of our three Airbus H145 variants releasing. Um, the kind of the decision behind that was just from the community, really. The feedback that we got regarding our freeware H135 was that people wanted to see a higher quality visual model reproduced, as well as us to go deeper into the system. So that's where that whole decision to go pay where it came from is just to increase the quality of both of those items there. Um, and then after that, you know, we do have our next project lined up for what we'll be doing after the Airbus H145. Not ready to yet announce that, but it's kind of in line with just what we're known for, which is just pushing the boundaries of what's able to be done in the sim. And We've listened to the community. There's a lot of features out there that people still want to see that aren't in the sim yet. So we're going to try to tackle something, uh, another challenge after this. Fantastic. I know one person in particular who'd be very excited for what you've got coming up. Uh, <laughs> so um, I just want to go over to Edson now. I know you've spoken a little bit about kind of your future plans, but is there anything more specific you want to talk about for the next uh, half year? Yeah. So. Uh... The Sky Park continues active development. Um, you could say that it's it's sitting on the uh, on the, in the foreground. Uh, Kevin is carrying that forward by leaps and bounds on the back end, and then slowly we're going to start releasing some some bigger feature sets uh, uh, to the uh, to the public. Um, we're happy to announce uh, Raul from FS Reborn uh, joining the team in a more official capacity to help us continue to expand into the aircraft space. Um, when we bid off the uh, project of creating Freedom Fox uh, in conjunction with Trent Palmer, uh, little did we know how much it would actually take to create and fully QA an aircraft. Um, and let me tell you, wow, um, it ate up some time. Uh, so we're kind of spinning off some of these duties uh, onto Raul. He's going to help us take things uh, to the next level. As you know, a recent announcement that Got Gravel is actually doing the uh, the tuning. So it's nice to have kind of a tuner uh, inside our our doors as well. Uh, then we've got some uh, some interesting projects coming uh, next that'll have you guys floating over the moon. Um, and then we have uh, some scenery as well. So there's some scenery in the works that uh, we think is going to be very exciting. And uh, yeah, we're excited to kind of pivot into a couple new things in the next six to 12 months. Very exciting indeed. And uh, Sergio, I've, I've kind of left you to last because these other guys are developers as such. And I'm just curious as to see what your next six months looks like as a community leader and what you're planning on doing with like your website and your Facebook groups um, as yeah. we move forward. Yeah, well, um, it's it's easier for me, right? <laughs> it's just a matter of continuing to do the work that I have been doing for for the last five years and continue to try and grow and foster the community. But at the same time, I'm also working with some uh, teams that are developing things for Microsoft Flight Simulator as well. On the background, which should, we should have some news uh, in, a, in a few weeks. So there's, there's, there's some interesting stuff going on there as well. Community-wise, it's just a matter of continuing to do the work. And it's just uh, we have a good community, good people. Um, like Edson once said, you know, we don't have, we are not afraid to moderate. So we do moderate and we do keep things tidy so that everyone can enjoy the community and help each other. And that's that's what we are going to do, not just for the next six months, but hopefully for the next years. The community is going to grow. Hopefully, it's going to expand. 
helicopters will eventually reach um, get um, reach or uh, arrive to Microsoft Flight Simulator, um, at least natively, because right now we have people like Steve and the team and the other guys that I have talked about in some other companies and some other teams working on them as well, but they are going to reach uh, to get into Microsoft Flight Simulator natively. So eventually the community will grow. Um, so it's just a matter of pushing forth. Fantastic. Well, I'm afraid, guys, that wraps up all the time we have for this cross-community discussion. Um, before I hand over back to Evan, I just want to say a huge, huge thank you to everybody on the call today, as well as Aerosoft. Unfortunately, uh, Winfried had some connection issues, but what we'll do is we'll try and get some of the answers from him and try and publish that in some capacity, because I think what he has to say will probably be very exciting indeed. Um, so, yeah, so thank you so much for everyone who's participating. Uh, my name is Callum from the FS Elite team, and Evan, I'm going to hand the reins back over to you. Very good. Thank you very much to Callum and to the panel for an amazing, amazing discussion today. We are going into our third and final contest draw, so go ahead and enter that right now. FlightSimAssociation.com slash contest. This will be the third and final opportunity to win a number of prizes. We're going to be drawing 14 of them in just a moment as we wrap up today's stream. So go ahead and put your names and emails in. FlightSimAssociation.com slash contest. Test. I will echo what Callum had to say about Aerosoft. Winfried sends his apologies and regrets that he couldn't be here, but I have some information for you. He wanted to be able to just communicate around that last question specifically and share what does the future look like for Aerosoft. Uh, so he says Aerosoft is working on many new airports, airliners, and a few tools, specifically the CRJ9 and 1000 soon the A330 coming up for Microsoft Flight Simulator and the Twin Otter also for Microsoft Flight Simulator are on their top priorities list. And I also asked the question, would you say the focus is Microsoft Flight Simulator over P3D or X-Plane for Aerosoft right now? And the answer was yes, waiting for a little bit more development for X-Plane, like a potential future version before we start to really prioritize that. And at the moment, P3D is not the focus for Aerosoft. So there's a little bit of information for you fresh off the WhatsApp conversation with Winfried. And hey, that's the fun of doing these things live. So we'll go back to some prizes in just a moment as we go and uh, wrap things up today. So let's go ahead and bring those back up on the screen. As I said, 14 prizes as we wrap up today's session. So here we go. Uh, Aerosoft, winner's choice of a downloadable product off the Aerosoft store. That's Hunky Arizona. TFDI winner's choice goes to Finds the Lost. Uh, Milviz King Air for prepared P3D airplane making its way in here to New Holland 079. Two more Orbix products. Those go to Boston 492 and Spot Ollie. MK Studios has donated two scenery products. We've got Keflavik for either P3D or Microsoft Flight Sim going to Dr. Wigglespank. And for Dublin, P3D or Microsoft Flight Simulator to Jack B. So congratulations to you. I said 14. That's not 14. So here we go. We've got even more. Parallel 42 came in under the wire. Edson called me last night and said, I want to get on on this. So here we go. Two giveaways for the Sky Park. Those are John Horde. And Evasion, congratulations to both of you. That's a really cool add-on to check out if you haven't seen it before. And Trent Palmer's Freedom Fox, which is not out yet, but as soon as it does release, the following four people, Burly Sane, Kian the Gamer on Twitch, Chrissy, and Just Yarn, you will be some of the first people to get that, and you won't even have to pay for it. So super, super exciting stuff. And as we get set to wrap things up today, a couple of quick notes from me. Uh, firstly, we'd love to do more of these if people like them. I hope you enjoyed today's conversation. I hope you're looking for more. And if that's the case, what you could do to really help us out, if you're watching this with any of the content creator broadcast partners that signed on today, please give them some feedback. Hopefully, if you're one of those people I mentioned, if you're help hosting us today on YouTube or Twitch, uh, just have a chat with your viewers. Tell me what they have to say. Did you like having uh, this one, this developer chat right over here? Was that helpful? Did you enjoy the format and the questions that we answered? Would you prefer a live Q&A? Uh, we just love to hear thoughts from the community on that. So please tell the content creators and content creators, please tell me so we can roll that into a future potential session just like this one. And developers, if you're not in this one, there it is. 
a developer chat right there uh, and you want to be next time, send me a message on Discord, reach out to me via email, and we'd love to get you involved in that way as well. And of course, in the next webinar that we have coming up, whenever we decide to do uh, something like this one again. Uh, we've got coming up next week on July the 29th, an X-Plane webinar. So we were talking a lot about Flight Simulator Microsoft today. X-Plane is going to be talking about their future live from Oshkosh, Wisconsin, coming up next week on Flight Sim Association, if you're interested in an update from them. And, uh, oh, apparently, I guess I was supposed to say something uh, about uh, maybe a honeycomb yolk. Was that a, that was a thing, huh? Okay, uh, Honeycomb Yoke. Yes, the grand prize from today. And this one is for all the marbles. Uh, if someone has the ability to do a drum roll, please insert that now. The winner of the Honeycomb Alpha Flight Controls is Yusuf K12. So congratulations to you. Huge prize. That'll get shipped right to your home, we hope. And so a huge thank you to you and really to everyone else for putting up with me today and listening to the great conversation from our panelists. Again, we'd love to do some more of this. So folks enjoyed it. Share that with your content creator partners and make sure you give them some great feedback for us. Lots of thank yous as we wrap up Orbix, Elise, and the entire team there for the Fly July promotion this month. So grateful we could make this work. Callum from FS Elite for moderating the developer chat for being around with us today. Those broadcast partners on Twitch and YouTube. Huge thank you to you guys. You help us get the message out there. Our wonderful panelists, prize donors, and from all of us who are here today, from behalf of the panelists, Phil, my colleague Phil uh, on Flight Sim Association, thank you so much. Good night, and hopefully we will see you at Flight Sim Expo in September. If we don't see you in person, of course, we hope to see you online. Thank you very much, and have a great night.